What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner and today we are talking about the SIG MCX. Uh, you'll notice I have two right here behind me and we're gonna talk about some of the slight differences between them. We are gonna also briefly tell you guys about the SIG MPX, but yeah, let's get into it. So I know a lot of you guys are probably already know what a SIG MCX is, but we do have a lot of new viewers on the channel. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, there's a lot more variations of it now. So when people come into the store looking for them, they don't necessarily know all the differences. So I just wanted to do a quick rundown on most of the MCXs. I only have these two with me because they are quite expensive, but um, they are pretty cool in my opinion. So let's get into it. So what is the SIG MCX? Well, basically it's like an Armalite AR-180 meets an AR-15. That's probably the best way to put it because the AR-180 was a cool retro um, 5.56 rifle that uses a piston system. And a piston system is pretty cool in the way it operates because it runs a lot cleaner than a direct impingement gun. A direct impingement gun is where you have a gas tube, so your gases are flowing through the tube to cycle your gun. Piston guns normally have a rod, and your gases push that rod to cycle your bolt carrier group. So there's more gas escaping out front and less in your chamber area or your receiver, aside from what comes out of the back of the barrel. So it uh, does not use the gas to blow the bolt back. It uses it to push a rod or your piston rod to cycle your bolt. So hopefully that's kind of like a quick rundown for you, but um, that's the quick version of that. But yeah, the AR-180 uses a pretty cool um, AR buffer system and so does the SIG MCX here. So it's basically an AR-15 meets that and you'll notice your spring and your whole buffer assembly is like one solid piece versus a standard AR-15 where you have a buffer and a buffer spring. So that is your whole operating system. It compresses on itself and yeah, the bolt just compresses back and shoots forward. So it's a very cool system. It runs very clean. Um, when you add suppressors, it does make them more dirty, but aside, besides that, it is a very clean running system. Even suppressed, it's a clean running system. So yeah, the MCX just combines that really nice piston system into an AR-15. There are other AR-15s that are piston driven, but they still use a standard AR buffer system. The MCX does not. So you can have a folding stock on here, still have it be completely shootable and very modular as far as what this gun can do because the rail pops off easily, the barrels are relatively easy to change. And I think the overall concept of the MCX is a very cool gun. Um, there's a lot of other YouTubers like Lucas from T-Rex Arms, he talks about it a lot and he's talked about it for years. And uh, I think because of him, a lot of them have sold and I've gotten hyped on them over the years because of it too. So. The MCX is a very nice design. It's not going anywhere. If anything, it's just gonna get better. And I don't know if it'll eventually replace the AR-15, but I mean, anything is possible. It's just the AR-15 is so widely used. And these, I mean, they're widely used, but nowhere near compared to the standard AR-15. So the MCX is very cool. I would still label it one of those specialty guns though. I, I can't necessarily say it's a common use gun. Now, one thing that I think is cool, is, and I didn't realize this until unfortunately, um, recently in Arizona, there was a shooting. Scottsdale PD or a unit that worked in Scottsdale PD was using SIG MCXs with suppressors. I thought that was, I mean, the shooting's not cool, but I thought it was cool to see local law enforcement using MCXs um, because every other department that I know of, um, including I have a lot of friends in the departments out here, none of them run MCXs for their duty gun. So seeing Scottsdale PD involved in a shooting with um, a bunch of their guys running these, I thought that was uh, pretty cool setups. And yeah, I would say as far as my MCX goes, I've had zero issues with it. I just recently put this suppressor on here. Um, so I only have a couple range trips with this specific suppressor. This is the SIG SRD762 quick detach suppressor. I was running this on the Rattler right here, which is also an MCX. But the issue I was having with that is, well, it's not really an issue. It's hard to take the gun apart with this on there. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but basically it is a quick detach suppressor. Sometimes it does get stuck. There's a lever right here that I press and then I can twist it off, but it's kind of tight on there right now. So I'm not gonna twist it off. Um, it does get a little stuck. Now that is better than the other issues I've heard of this specific suppressor where they come loose. Um, this does not come loose, it's rock solid, but it does get kind of stuck on there. So I chose to run it on this because it is a 30 cal suppressor and it's pretty low back pressure from the first couple trips I've had with it on this gun because these are also adjustable gas. You can uh, raise or lower the amount of gas going into the system, um, specifically when you run it suppressed. But even when I don't run the suppressed, I run it on the lower gas setting. Um, that could mean that it's over gassed in the uh, upper gas setting. But in the lower gas setting, this gun has ran everything I've put through it um, from like PMC223 to 
Federal 556, it eats it all unsuppressed and suppressed as of right now. So again, I think the MCX is cool because it's so modular. Uh, this would be considered the second gen. This is an MCX Virtus. Now the first generation, that is like their legacy series. Um, I think most of the first generations are 16 inch, 16 inch barrels with a key mod rail. There's probably other legacy versions. Um, legacy is just the old school ones. This is probably considered a legacy one at some point or maybe now. But yeah, the old school first gen MCXs, they were just called the SIG MCX. They, they didn't have a specific like term other than that that I know of, but now they're called the legacy MCXs. I think, again, most of them are 16 inch barrels with the key mod rail, but the whole purpose of the gun was to have interchangeable rails because your upper and lower separate just like a normal AR-15, but once you pop this first pin out, you can take the rail off and then put a different rail on there and then different barrels, different calibers, stuff like that. So yeah, the earlier ones are still out there. I did hear of some issues with the earlier ones. I can't say to all of that because I've never had one or shot one, but um, the Virtus was supposed to be the fix to the first gen MCX. And the Virtus is a gen two. Um, the most noticeable Virtuses or notable Virtuses would be the gray ones. As far as I know, I have also seen the flat dark earth ones. But honestly, when I think Virtus, I think gray. It looks so sick. I, I love this color a lot. Like it's probably one of my favorite color guns. And if you guys know me, I'm a big flat dark earth person. I would 100% take the Virtus and gray over flat dark earth. So yeah, the Virtus is considered the gen two of the MCXs. I don't know where the Rattler comes into play on that because the Rattler has been around for a long time. Now they have the new Rattler LTs with the Rattler lights. Those would be considered gen three as far as I know. But aside from that, there wasn't really a gen two Rattler that I know of. There's updated internal parts in like the, the buffer spring and all that, or not the buffer spring, like the, the back of the spring assembly, because I guess it used to be plastic and now it's metal. But aside from that, I don't know what generation this would be considered. I think it was made in like 2017-ish. But yeah, the Virtus is cool. The Rattler is very cool. Um, now the new generations would be considered the Spear. So anytime you hear of SIG Spear or MCX Spear, just think it's a Gen 3 MCX, but it's still classified as an MCX, whether you buy the 308, the 300 Blackout, 762 by 39 or 556. Once they went to the Gen 3, they opened up the doors to the other two calibers because I don't think they did a 7.62x39 in the Virtus for the Gen 2 MCXs. Um, I could be wrong on that part, but they definitely did not have a 308. So it was very cool to see that they came out with a 308. And in the 308, they changed it up a bit because the standard MCX, it operates kind of like an AR-15. You have your standard charging handle, everything else. But the Spear in 308 has the charging handle plus a side charging handle right here that kind of folds in. So that was kind of cool. I haven't shot any of the spears, so I, I can't say anything on that, but I just wanted to talk about the MCX as a whole. Those are the Gen 3s. I do plan on getting one at some point. I don't know when. I like buying used guns. I bought both of these used. So yeah, I don't like buying new guns because they are pricey. I mean, even these used are pricey, but um, if you like the MCX, I highly recommend the Virtus. Uh, the one thing with this versus the spear, I think they're about a pound lighter. I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating maybe a little bit, but the spear is noticeably lighter than the Virtus. Like if I pick up a 16 inch spear, it's gonna be heavier than my Virtus, especially the way it's set up right now. But yeah, what we have here is an 11 and a half inch Virtus. I am running Magpul Embus Pro flip up sights. I have a cloud defensive. Uh, this is the Rain 2.0. I have an EOTech EXPS 2.0 and then the SRD 760 suppressor. So they don't make the suppressor anymore. Um, I really like it. And then I have a Troy grip right here. And then I just recently changed to this gray Viking Tactics sling. It's not exactly where I need it yet, but uh, yeah, I've just been playing around with it and the gray looks cooler than the black one that I had on there. So yeah, that is the SIG Virtus. Now let's talk about the Rattler. The Rattler is also considered an MCX. Again, it's really just the platform that SIG puts it on. And SIG makes AR-15s too. They have the M400 series or the 716 series. So they have AR-15s too. Um, honestly, I like some of their older ones better, like the 516 or the 716. Those were their piston driven ARs and they were sick. Um, I'm not a fan of the new ones as much. I don't even think they make the new 516 any anymore, but I have a 716, which is the piston driven 308. That one's awesome. Um, but yeah, back to this one. This is the SIG Rattler. It's a 300 blackout. Um, I'm running this one suppressed. And the reason why I took off the SIG SRD 760 suppressor is because to take that off, which it's hard to take off anyways, um, you have to do it at the rear end of the suppressor. And to get to the rear end of the suppressor in here, you have to take this rail off, which is not bad. The issue is I have a pressure pad on here from uh, Surefire. It's in a cloud defensive mount, but that mounts the front rail to the actual receiver of the gun. So I can't take the rail off 
by just taking the pin out. I have to undo the light, then uh, undo the rail to undo the suppressor, which is kind of a pain if you're just trying to quickly clean it because you don't need to take the rail off for every, every time cleaning. Uh, but what's nice with this suppressor is this is a Q half Nelson. So I just recently put this on here. I haven't shot with this yet, but I'm gonna be shooting here soon with it. Um, this is direct thread. So all I gotta do is twist it and it unscrews off. And it's much lighter than that uh, SIG SRD can. So this just pops off. It's a direct thread suppressor. Um, honestly, for the SIG rifles, I highly recommend direct thread with taper mounts. So this is a Q half Nelson and it tapers to the barrel very nicely. I also run a Q Honey Badger SD, if you guys have watched on my channel. That thing is sweet, extremely quiet. I, I have no doubts this will be quiet. And uh, I've never had any issues with these suppressors backing off because they, they basically create a seal on the tapered barrel. Because on a standard barrel, like an AR-15, you have a 90 degree shoulder and then your threads. On a taper, there's just a slight like angle or a slant and same thing in the suppressor. And it just creates a seal when you tighten it where a 90 degree shoulder, there's not really a seal. It's just, you're hoping it's all the way on, but you don't rock set it or lock tied it or anything like that. So vibrations over time can back off a direct thread suppressor. Um, technology on it has gotten a lot better now. So I'm not gonna say all direct thread suppressors would back off. I've never had one back off, but at least on a pistol, like a nine mil pistol, those back off over time as you shoot them. So tapered barrels on rifles are important. I could even see tapered barrels on pistols being a thing in the future, who knows? I'm not a suppressor designer, but on this, it is sweet. And now I like the fact that not only is my gun lighter, it's a little bit shorter, and I can take this suppressor off without disassembling the whole front rail, because that was kind of annoying. So it's a little bit lighter. Um, the suppressor, you'll notice, is just behind the Surefire light here. The SRD can, I think, was like just in front of it, just a hair in front of it, so maybe like a half inch longer. So makes it shorter, lighter, and easier to maintain. And this is a pretty cool bag gun. It's a little big for a backpack, but it is a cool bag gun. Um, so what we have here is a SIG Rattler. It started out life as just a factory Rattler. What I did is I bought the SIG cane brake rail. So the cane brake Rattler normally ships with a fake suppressor. So you have this extended larger rail over a fake suppressor. And I think the goal behind it is you buy a suppressor to put under that rail. Um, the cane brakes were a flat dark earth receiver with the black rail. I just bought a used cane brake rail, stuck it on my black Rattler, put the can in there and kind of made the same thing. So it's like a SIG MCX SD or Rattler SD, um, kind of like the Q Honey Badger SD. And I like it so far. I have had a little bit of um, ammo issues specifically with the SMB ammo. But besides that, I mean, this gun runs extremely well. It's quiet. Now that I know that it doesn't like that ammo that much, I'm trying not to shoot that ammo through there, but I have a lot of that ammo. So that's yeah, still, um, still kind of an annoyance with this is that, I, and I'm not the only one. People have commented on my videos saying that their Rattlers are ammo picky. So that's, that's not just a me thing. I do like it, but I wanna give you guys the best information I can about it. So specifically mine does not like SMB 200 grain ammo, but it's eaten up everything else I've shot through it so far. And the gun is clean. Someone commented on one of my videos, well, maybe you should clean your guns. I do clean my guns. Um, I, I make sure they're clean enough to run for sure, but that ammo just, it did not run well in this specific gun. So um, changing up the suppressor can have something to do with it. It can also change my accuracy. So this gun was zeroed with that on there, but I took the flash hider off and the can off. So this gun might be not zeroed anymore, but what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna be doing a comparison video of this suppressed next to the Q Honey Badger suppress next to a uh, Daniel Defense PDW suppress. So we're gonna be doing that video here um, in the next week. So you guys will see that. It'll be pretty cool. I'm excited to shoot them all side by side and we'll see which one is the reigning champ. But honestly, 300 blackout suppressed is just extremely quiet and I highly recommend it. But yeah, this also has nice armament flip up sides. We are running a surefire light um, on the left side. It's not my favorite spot, but I kind of did this as an LVAW clone, which is just like a military Rattler setup clone. And uh, yeah, I'm, that's why I'm running the light on the left side. Normally I would run it on the right side because I'm right-handed, so it's kind of in my way, but it's not bad. Uh, I have a T-Rex arm sling here. And then, uh, yeah, we got the cloud defensive mount for the Surefire pressure pad. This is an EOTech EXPS 2-0. You'll notice I kind of like EOTechs. I, they, they don't sponsor me at all, but I have quite a few of their optics. I even have one on the SIG MPX here. Now the difference between the MPX and the MCX, it's just their pistol caliber. So as of right now, as far as I know, they only do it in nine mil but it'd actually be pretty cool to see this in like a 45 or a 10 mil at some point. But yeah, MPX four and a half inch barrel. 
Um, this one has a Lancer Systems rail. This is a carbon fiber rail, the EOTech, and then we have a Surefire little micro scout light on there. And yeah, this is a cool backpack gun. But yeah, I think that's kind of the main things with the MCX. I hope you enjoy. And at some point we will get a spear on the channel. I don't know what caliber. If I had to just pick one right now, I would choose the 308 just because I don't have a 308, but it'd be cool to have a 300, a 556, and a 308 MCX. But honestly, I'm, I like good deals. So if a good deal came in on a 300 or a 762 by 39 or a 556, I'd probably take one of those too. But if I had to pick one as of right now, it'd be the 308 just so I have a different caliber. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, you like the MCX and yeah, if you like these older style ones, I recommend getting them because they are gonna get hard to find. And I do see this being a collectible gun in the future, but I highly recommend shooting it. Don't just buy it and never shoot it. They are a lot of fun to shoot and get all decked out kind of like this. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next video.